Hi, I'm Philip with Thrifty Tool Shed. And I'm Peter from Electromagnetic Videos. I'm going to start this video off today with what parts fail and why. And I'll talk about how manufacturers estimate the failure rate of the products they build and how they make that delicate choice of how much they pay for the component parts and what the reliability of the final product that you purchase will actually be. So I want to start things off looking at a survey that was done a while back on my channel. What electronics components do you see failures of the most? And not surprising at all, capacitors took the number one spot at 62% at this time. Transistors, 19%. I really expected that to be a little bit higher. I also included IC or chip. That received about 10% of the votes. I included diodes and that got 5%. And then I just left the open category of other to see if I was leaving out too much stuff if that number got large. But it was the lowest at 4%. So we hit the major four there for sure. Um, it doesn't exactly line up with what I see typically on the items that I actually work on. Now, I definitely have videos out there showing capacitor failures that I found on boards. This one is from a kilowatt meter. And this one, either I had a bad sine wave input from an inverter or a type of power surge. I really was not sure what took this meter out, but the capacitor was definitely faulty. I also worked on a 15 volt power supply with a bulge cap. I did do a quick video on this one because it had the telltale sign of a, a cap that had vented right here in this spot. And if we look at the overlay, that's exactly where it was at. The ESR definitely showed high on this cap as well as showing leaky of course this was checked in circuit it still showed faulty out of circuit as well i showed on video what the new cap would register and we see here that it did show a tremendous difference so likely cause on this one i would say design flaw if you look at these caps everything's just so compact and no good way to get airflow for proper cooling but it did last way beyond the warranty period some more caps here on this polaris speedo we had way more than caps, but you can see pretty easily that these ruptured and vented violently. We also have bad transistors, diodes, and a stepper IC on this speedometer, but I believe it was a bad battery or a combination of a bad battery and voltage regulator that damaged this speedo because it took so many components out. But this speedo was about 18 years old, so way, way past the warranty period on this device. We did catch a cap popping here on camera while I was troubleshooting this GE refrigerator board. This board did see a power interruption, so either a brownout or a spike on startup. It did cause the little switcher transistor to short, and as I was troubleshooting the board, it shorted and actually went high voltage and popped this cap. This failure was also many years past the warranty. I want to take time to mention here also, I have worked on a good many of these switcher type chips. These are getting harder and harder to find. These are usually some type of DC to DC converter chip where they pulse at high frequency a lot to be either a boost or a buck regulator, usually a DC to DC buck regulator, but they do have a lot of age to them. And this one was definitely many years past the warranty. And I would just say typical life expectancy of the chip, really. I've had quite a few of these hex fit type MOSFETs be bad on me. This one's on an Ego Blower brushless controller. Not that uncommon for at least one phase of that controller to have some shorted MOSFETs, and this one did, as shown. Fairly easy to replace, but I believe this to be a lot of times thermal stress, just a very high current device, very compact configuration. I worked on quite a few Ego blowers in the past, and I've seen these fail within warranty, as well as some just outside of warranty. I've worked on a good many Ego batteries as well. These can stem from many failures, including the cells, a lot of the components on the BMS board itself. Just a very complicated battery system. And I've also seen this failure within warranty as well as just out of warranty. While we're talking about batteries, we do see a lot of self-inflicted issues with batteries sometimes. This one coming from a used toy from a thrift store, but some mismatched alkalines and of course leaving them in long term will always get you something like this full of corrosion. Was we'll able to clean this up, but one failure that a lot of times as consumers we do to ourselves. Recently, I've seen a good many Ego battery management boards that had a bad DC converter transformer. A transformer is something that I very rarely replace on a board or coil of any kind. So 
as we start talking more about having these issues with these boards, you know that this is at least somewhat a design flaw. Just a very complicated battery management system. As I mentioned with the battery, I've seen these with failures within warranty as well as just out of warranty. So now I want to share with you some components that I've kept over the last four years. This is not by any means all the components that I have replaced in the last four years, but it is a good many of them. Sometimes I give the components to friends or family members if I think they might find it interesting what failed or how many components failed. A good example of that is the Speedo. It had eight different component failures. So I wanted my friend at work to see it and just see how many components failed and how they failed. But one reason I wanted to keep some of these components is so we could go through like this one day and just look. I don't have a lot of larger capacitors in here. It just takes up too much room. So there's definitely been a good many bigger capacitors over the years. But the main thing is these small components. I wanted to keep these for sure. We see a lot smaller components, even though some of these components do carry high currents to be so small. You'll see a lot of these little MOSFETs. I do have some capacitors. You see some diodes, resistors, even have a USB port here, thermal fuse. I see a trace fuse at the top. You'll see that I do have a lot more power components than just capacitors. I don't disagree with the survey whatsoever. I knew that capacitors were going to be number one on the list for sure. But because I work on a lot of tools and batteries and things that are higher current, I do typically see more failures with power devices or current carrying devices such as transistors and sometimes diodes. But more specifically, mine is usually MOSFETs. But we still have a pretty broad array here. And keep in mind, even though a lot of these components are small, a lot of them definitely disappeared on me. These little small 603 and smaller components. They'll take off on you in a minute. So there's a lot of these components I just never did keep. Even if I tried, by the time you clean up your workbench and get up a lot of debris and leftover, a lot of times you clean up your components. They're not much bigger than a grain of sand. And by the way, this piece right here and this other piece up here, they go together. That was part of what was left on that G board when the capacitor blew. That's actually this capacitor here. As far as component defects, layer misalignment, or bad solder joints or splashes. It's been my experience that a lot of times these are caught either during the manufacturing process or the QC testing before they're actually sent out. Just a little bit of footage of David Ray showing me around Cyber City Circuits here in Augusta, Georgia. He shared with me his pick and place machine in action and some of his other equipment as well where they make their own custom PCBs. We got stenciling oven one of his finished boards here just wanted to share this while talking about pcb manufacturing now this is a mechanical issue here that happened to me pretty recently and that's just this edger had a snap ring that wasn't seated properly at the factory and this was just something that they missed on the quality control side and i just shared this on video in case it helped somebody else that that snap ring had to be pushed back in place because it was causing the gearbox to misalign and stop turning other than that, I haven't seen really a lot of failures from brand new products lately. Well, that brings part one to an end. If you'd like to watch part two and see how manufacturers determine how long the products you buy will actually last, click here and that'll take you over to my channel, Electromagnetic Videos. Or you can click down here and watch another video on Philip's channel. So I hope you have enjoyed this video today. See you next time on my channel, Thrifty Toolshed.